Uh, we're about to open this market and we're looking at a downside move, not real serious at the opening bell. We need help to cover this market and we've got it. David Barnson is here, so too is Jonathan Honig, along with Susan and Ashley. This virus spreading yeah. outside China, the word pandemic is being used and that's affecting the market again. David, first to you, real fast. How We don't know how bad it's going to get. That's what we don't know. We don't know how bad it's going to get from a health standpoint. The market is up four and a half percent since the bottom level of coronavirus three weeks ago. The, the, there's going to be enhanced volatility, but no, this will not be a substantive start of a bad market. Well, that's very interesting because uh, mm -hmm. for a time there, it looked like it might be. That's what volatility does. Down volatility can give you that scare, but that's what it is, volatility. Coca-Cola, they say the virus outbreak will take a bite out of sales and earnings. Jackie DeAngelis has more on this, please. Jackie? Good morning to you, Stuart. That's right. They're watching the virus very closely and saying there could be a cent or two impact in first quarter earnings, but the company also reaffirming its full year guidance and they say that the safety and health of the company's associates remains the highest priority the stock marginally down this morning back to you thank you jackie i've got big heavy breathing here from david barnes when we got that coca cola report what's the problem same exact words from procter gamble earlier in the week a cent or two of earnings temporarily around the quarter because of this disruption reiterating full year guidance that's all that matters the coca Coca-Cola's, Procter Gamble's of this are fine along the way. We need a few weeks to shake through this. Okay, got it. It's down a bit. Uh, it's a down day on the market. Yes, it is. But I, I want to bring up what may be a real bright spot here, and that is housing. The Home Builders ETF is at very close to an all-time high. We get existing home sales numbers at the top of the 10 o'clock hour. Lots of positive signs. Lots of positive there. signs, yes. I mean, look, the, the, um, the existing home sales hitting a uh, near two-year high in the last month. We're getting them uh, in less than half an hour. It's been interesting to see what we see for January. But let us not forget another really key aspect, Stu, is that the mortgage applications have been absolutely surging, up 7 and 8 percent at a time with each passing month. Finally, these low interest rates, these mortgage rates of under 3.5 percent are finally giving us some traction. Yeah. So yeah, what do you think, Jonathan? Could we yeah. see a housing boom that helps the economy by the spring? Yeah, I mean, considering that the stocks are almost always leading indicators, yeah, I think that mm. housing data is going to be excellent, Stuart. And I got to tell you, I look at these home building stocks and I, for me, it's a very much a shoulda, coulda, woulda. This ETF was $10 in 2009. It's $50 today in 2020. And unlike in 2008, the average investor, the average consumer isn't loaded up on mortgage debt the way that they were in the early part of the 20th century. They've got credit card debt, but their mortgages are in much better situation than they were 15 years ago. More heavy breathing from David Barnes. And what do you got? You got a problem with the housing boom? Uh, no, it depends on people mean by the housing boom. Jonathan and I would define it the same way. I think it's a good thing for there to be better profits in the home building sector and more ho housing stock getting built. But remember, it's 50 now. It was 50 in 2008. Mm -hmm. It went to 10, as Jonathan said. So it's just gone a round trip over the last 12 years. What I don't care about or think is good for the economy is overpriced housing. So when we talk about housing boom, we had one once. That didn't end so well. Mm -hmm. uh, so what I want is to see more houses getting built. Right. That's what Absolutely. we need. Absolutely. Yeah. We need supply coming on street. That's right. That's, you got that right. Let me get back to Amazon. They're down 13 points today, but they were the clear winner during the holidays. David Barnson, do you think that, I mean, strange question. Do you think sky is the limit for Amazon? I think the sky is certainly the limit as far as what they can do with their online presence and their ongoing revenue growth. As far as the stock price goes, it's trading at 95 times earnings. Um, let me tell you something very interesting as we were just talking about Walmart. Walmart is up 25% in the last year and a half. The S&P is up 16%. What do you think Amazon's up? Tell Barely 10%, all of it in the last four weeks. Mm. So, so not only is the market trouncing Amazon, Walmart is trouncing both the market and Amazon. I think that you, uh, I don't totally agree with Jonathan that Walmart would be a consumer discretionary play. Like Amazon, they're kind of more consumer staple plays. People have to buy the stuff that they're buying from these types of stores versus a Six Flags and, and other types of discretionary retailers. I think that both of them are going to do very well, but for us, as you 
you know, I can't help myself. It's a dividend growth story at Walmart, yep. Yep. and they are cream of the crop. Okay. Cheesecake Factory. Uh, what are they doing? Well, I ate there on Sunday. That doesn't make a difference. <laughs> but they're at uh, 42. <laughs> the producer says it's not helping. Uh, it's down 16 cents at $42. Why are you laughing, Jonathan? <laughs> I, I, I'm surprised. It's, I always thought it was just in a caviar and a filet mignon for you. You're eating a Cheesecake Factory with the rest of us. It's great to see you. And I'm surprised, the rest of us. I'm surprised about the, the move lower in the stock because Cheesecake Factory actually has been a, a value-oriented stock. It's been doing quite well yesterday, so I'm surprised to see the stock down a little bit this morning. Have you, any your comment, uh, have you any comment, Bonson, on my financial standing? I know you, know, you wait too well to think something? that you're out eating caviar and filet. You're, you're, uh, you have an incredible mix of being very debonair but still a uh, normal type person. Cheesecake Factory, I think, will suit you just fine. Excellent. You're back on the show this okay. week. Yeah. Jonathan, you're out. <laughs> no, seriously. Right, it's 9.40. You know what that means. David, Jonathan, both of you gentlemen, thanks for joining us. Good day today.